All right, just a couple of the Wall Street titans I've been talking to over the past week on uh, this network at Fox Business, which if you don't get, you should demand. But fortunately, many of you got it, so you don't have to demand it. And so you heard from at least some of the mighty uh, that we might be getting a little stir crazy about how bad a recession we're looking at, if we're looking at a recession at all. It might be relatively mild if it comes to pass at all. They base that on continuing job growth and continuing job gains. But of course, we do have this backdrop of inflation. And it was a reminder yesterday in a wholesale inflation report that will probably keep the inflation uh, ever leery Federal Reserve hiking rates probably a half point next week and maybe uh, for quite a while after that. Let's get the read from Catherine Rudiviera, the bull tick uh, capital market strategist. Steve Moore, of course, Donald Trump's economic Svengali, and Jonas Max Ferris, just overall Svengali for us here at Fox. <laughs> so, um, Catherine, to you first on what uh, people, you know, like Ken Fisher, people like uh, Bank of America's Brian Moynihan, uh, I could extend this to others who are saying, uh, we're going to have some bumps, but it's not going to be nearly as bad. What do you say? Well, inflation has to come down. Unfortunately, the Fed held rates too low for too long, and we're dealing with the aftermath of that. Remember, inflationary pressures aren't just supply side, so it's not all Putin's fault. It's not supply chain distortion's fault. There's the demand side as well, and we have a labor market that's overheated, Neil. So for the Fed to get inflation back down to the 2% average target, the unemployment rate cannot remain where it is. It simply cannot. We're at 3.7%. That's very close to historically lows. Even the Fed sees unemployment rising to 4.4. I think, Neil, it goes to 5% plus. And if I'm right, hmm. historically, it's never happened in the United States that unemployment over a course of 12 months rises 50 basis points or more, and the economy is not already in recession. So that's coming, and that's what's required at this point for the Fed to comply with its dual mandate, which, remember, is 2% inflation and full employment. You know, you think about it, Steve, we started out at 0% interest rates this year. Right now, we're at around 5%, maybe go a lot further north than that. Who knows? Where are you on this? Well, look, I think that we've done a pretty good job of getting that inflation rate down, Neil, from you know 9% a few months ago down to somewhere in the 5 to 6% range right now. But I got to tell you, it's a lot harder to get from you know six percent to three to the two to percent that we need to be at than it was to get it down from nine percent. So I'm, I'm what I'm saying is I don't think that this fight against inflation is over by any means. I think it's not just the Fed's job to bring inflation down, but we need to let's not forget that what caused this massive inflation was the massive four trillion dollars of spending. And the question, right. of course, is will this new Republican House of Representatives when they take the gavel in January will they start to bring that? Uh, spending spree to a halt. I, I can't answer that question. I don't know, Neil, because this is Christmas season, and I've said it on your show last week that you know Republicans like to play Santa Claus just as much as the Democrats do. So that is my big concern: is whether we can get this massive spending binge over. You know, normally when you have divided government, as we're going to have over the next couple of years, Jonas, um, Wall Street likes that. A lot of business guys like that because they can't go too crazy. But actually, they can. They can go crazy. So what do you look at? Yeah, and some of the spending is on autopilot at this point, so it would actually require action to stop. It is good, and a lot of the spending is coming down now in the last, by automatic, you know, the loan, the student loan deferrals, the, a lot of the SBA loans, those payments are now coming due. That's going to take money out of people's pocket, which should help ease the inflation. But without the White House actively helping to lower inflation, it's all in the Fed. The Fed, i got to say, so far has done a very good job of not causing a depression. And there's, there's three bubbles. They took out two of them so far. The crypto bubble is largely gone as being a bubble. Uh, the tech stock boom, the startup boom, that's come down 50 to 90%. That's a bubble gone, just like 2000. The housing and commercial real estate bubble is still there. And this is the touchy one because high mortgage rates, high right. commercial mortgage rates, it's, it could collapse and cause an OA type of a situation. But if we maybe don't shoot for 2% and go for a stable 3%, their, you know, their mandate is actually stable price, is not it has to be 2%. And without the White House helping, we might have to settle for that as opposed to overdoing it and going to 0% or negative inflation and another bailout situation. Well, let me pursue that a little with you, Catherine. I had a chance to talk to Sam Zell. I know I'm a name dropper, but I had a chance to talk to Sam Zell. The real estate guys, he buys stuff on the Jeep, makes a lot of money on it. And he says, you know, even with, the, the, the impact of these higher rates, he thinks they should go higher. 
he, he's still fishing around and doesn't see much worth buying in this environment. If that's right, uh, real estate, to, quasi to Jason's point, has, a, has some hurt yet to come. What do you think? Yeah, it does have some hurt yet to come. And let's remember that the U U.S. economy is two-thirds based on consumption. Um, the U.S. consumer derives his or her net worth principally from two sources. One is their home value, and two is the value of their 401ks. Both are underwater, and both have further to go. So that means that 2023 is going to turn ugly for consumption. As I mentioned, the principal driver of the economy, which up to this point, Neil, has been remarkably resilient. The reason for that resiliency, despite inflation, in some cases, food and oil prices, rising double digits year, year over year, still has been good. Consumption has still been good because people have jobs. So once we get that flip in the job market and we get unemployment rate rising, consumption is going to roll over and exacerbated by a Fed that's still hiking, housing market that still has further to fall, and an equity market that, in my view, also has further to fall. Do you buy that, Steve? Steve, can you hear us? Is that for me? Yeah. Look, I think the one thing that, that you've yes. left out uh, of the equation, we haven't uh, mentioned the D word, which is debt. And when you look at how much debt the federal government has taken on, the trillions of dollars just in the last few years, uh, and then also one thing that really concerns me, I mean, you guys are right, that co the consumer has been king uh, over the last couple of years. The consumer has been really carrying the economy on its shoulders. But look mm -hmm. at what's happening to credit card debt. Uh, Neil and consumer debt, it is surging, and that means you know, can the consumer keep spending like this? I I have a I have some doubts about that because all debts have to be repaid unless you're the federal government. Yeah, Jonas, what do you think? The consumer very resilient, still so, maybe less than they were about a year ago. But what do you think? I mean, if they can keep borrowing and 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 they don't lose their jobs in high numbers, we kind of need like a five or percent plus unemployment rate to really ice the inflation. But of the three asset classes that we're talking about are stocks, bonds, and real estate. I think bonds at this point have the least downside, followed by stocks. I think real estate's the one to watch going forward because that hasn't really corrected yet. It's frozen because of the high rates. The rates are mortgages are coming down a little because. Basically, there's not a lot of activity, and the fear of this recession yeah. has caused long-term rates to go lower than short-term rates, which is, of course, an indication of a recession. So that's the one to keep an eye on. That's the one that's going to be hard to navigate. Got it. All right, indeed. Four weeks in a row. Uh, mortgage rates have been declining, but we haven't seen that pickup in mortgage activity. So there's something of what you say there. Uh, guys, thank you all very, very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.